Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed previous lectures on clock domain crossing. This is uh, another lecture in the same series of clock domain crossing. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to be discussing about multi voltage domains and crossing between multi voltage domains. So let's talk about a scenario first. Okay, so in this scenario, we're going to be talking about when uh, there is only one clock domain, but the signals are going from uh, one voltage domain, say V1, to another voltage domain, V2. Now think about for a second that uh, should be careful about this situation or not. Well, uh, first of all, we need to understand that uh, what is the nature of the signals. So let's say in signal, okay, we discussed about it in previous lecture as well that uh, this signal may be of data signal or control signals. So if these are data signals, then you might have different strategy in place uh, for synchronizing the data signals. Nevertheless, here, uh, we don't have different clock domains. We have the same clock domain. Okay. So this is strategy would apply to data signal as well as control signal. And these are passing from one voltage domain to another voltage domain. So typically, what we do here that uh, that a power control logic, okay, in, all, in whole chip, in a chip, there is a power control logic whose responsibility is to maintain, uh, maintain the uh, power or control the power uh, by switching on and off different portions of the, of, the, of the chip dynamically, okay. And this power control logic is uh, running a different clock running at power clock, different clock, and it sends an enable signal, okay. And that enable signal uh, controls, okay, a multiplexer or if you don't have this multiplexer, you just want to do level shifting of the signals between uh, one voltage domain to another voltage domain, okay. Or you might have uh, a complex a structure such as retention cell in voltage domain 3, okay, which is again controlled by power control logic uh, enable signal, uh, ESO enable is going to this multiplexer. Now, why do I call it ESO enable or UPF ESO? Well, uh, nowadays uh, the tools are supporting UPF based flow. UPF stands for unified power format. Now, these cells are is stitched at net list level. So at RTL, you do not see these cells. Okay. So what tool does, tool mimic the behavior of these cells and uh, it understand as if these are stitched at this place in RTL. And you can specify the behavior of these cells in UPF file and can carry out the CDC verification at RTL level. So nevertheless, uh, we could go uh, in detail about UPF based CDC flow in some other lecture. But in this lecture, let's talk about the concept. So if we have this kind of a structure where power control logic gives an enable signal coming from a different clock, power clock, okay, controlling multiplexer, which receives input signal in and then hands off this signal to, to the V2, different voltage domain. And we, we are switching off the V1 and when we are switching off V1, the static 1 is being fed to the flip-flop in the V2 voltage domain. So that's a simple scenario. Now, now if we put this uh, combinatorial logic in the form of uh, multiplexer in V3 voltage domain. It no longer a single clock domain. 
it becomes a CDC problem, a CDC crossing problem. See, power clock, uh, this signal, enable signal is running uh, under power clock, different clock, and different voltage domain V3. So it's a complex problem. Um, nevertheless, uh, what we can do here? Should we leave here? It's not safe. So there is a danger here that uh, uh, this flip flop in the V2 voltage domain may go to metastable state. So we need to do something with this signal. We need to synchronize it. And our favorite method of synchronizing is that either we use a synchronizing cell from the library or we use double flop or triple flop. Okay. Instead of saying double or triple flop, I'm just saying here a synchronizer. Synchronizer is nothing but a, you choose a cell from the technology library and stitch does that cell in the design. Now, if there is uh, any metastability issue, that will be taken care of, care by this uh, synchronizer. Good. Now, another important thing here is that uh, this enable signal. So this enable signal becomes a static, okay? So we can define it's a stable signal. It's, I shouldn't say static, it's a stable signal. A fairly stable signal. Power clock is running at a lower frequency. So it becomes quite a bit stable signal as compared to uh, the clock one. So we are safe here. One is again, is tied to the VDD, a stable signal. So we are now safe. So this is sort of a way we can do that when we have uh, signals in the same clock domain going from one voltage level to another voltage level. Same strategy will apply to if we have uh, say retention flop in voltage domain V3. Similar strategy for synchronizing the signal. So we can't, uh, we can't actually ignore uh, these signals. So all these signal crossings okay, between different voltage islands, these need to be synchronized. Now let's talk about another scenario. In this scenario, we have, as usual, uh, the signal is going from clock domain 1 to clock domain 2. And we are properly synchronizing it. However, as soon as we uh, say that, okay, this portion, Tx clock domain is running at different voltage and Rx clock is running at, Rx clock domain signals are running at different voltage, okay? Now things become complex, quite a bit complex. We need to pay uh, quite a bit attention to it. We just can't simply ignore it, otherwise, we will end up in problems. So now let's first talk about what is the nature of this signal. So the signal in here, um, we're talking about here the control signal. Now for the data signal, how to synchronize data signal between two different clock domains, uh, we discussed those techniques in previous lectures. Okay, So we may use FIFOs or other multi-bit uh, uh, clock domain crossing techniques. Nevertheless here, uh, we are interested in individual signals. So let's say N is a control signal or just an interrupt signal, okay, going from Tx clock to Rx clock. So as we discussed just, uh, just now that uh, we can use uh, power structures or isolation structure in the form of uh, uh, multiplexer or retention cell, or we can, may use simply level shifter. A simple level shifter may not work here because if you want to dynamically switching on and off these voltage domains, okay, then you need to pay special attention. So let's say our power control logic is giving us a enable signal, okay, and as usual we have put our our voltage domain three. Uh, 
multiplexer structure for switching off the V1 uh, in place. So what happens now? Is it safe this way? Well, you might argue that okay, I have I'm putting a synchronizer here in voltage domain two, fine, but you got to pay attention that uh, your sending clock domain is running at TX clock. And receiving clock domain is running at receiving clock. So these are two clock domains. In the previous example we just said that this is one clock domain, but that is not the case anymore. We have two clock domains here, and third clock domain is the power clock. Okay, so three clock domains and three voltage domains. So what if we, we make our life a bit easier and convert this problem to a single clock domain, okay, single clock domain and uh, multiple voltage domain problem. How we can do that? Well, what if we, we synchronize, okay, this in signal in the sending or source voltage domain with respect to Rx clock and then pass this signal to our to our multiplexer okay we are safe now because essentially this becomes the same problem like what we discussed just now that the signal this signal here and here, these are now belong to the same clock domain, Rx clock, because we have put a synchronizer here. It's just the voltage uh, domains are changing. Okay, so having this one synchronizer here will work. Good. So as you can see here that uh, we discussed two scenarios okay, for uh, voltage domain uh, crossings. These are, these are important uh, technical points uh, one needs to pay attention. If you, if you say that okay my chip doesn't uh, implement dynamic voltage scaling uh, and you, uh, you just fix the voltage domains in the very beginning. You might be okay with the level shifters, but as soon as you say that I'm controlling, okay, dynamically I'm switching on and off certain portions of the chip, uh, then your simple level shifters are sort of no longer would work there. You might need uh, to implement retention cells or multiplexer based logic which is controlled by power control logic and as soon as you do that uh, you have to pay attention to those crossings which will result with that operation okay all right guys uh, thank you very much for watching lectures on lip professor channel thank you for your comments thank you for subscribing and those who have not subscribed please do subscribe. We appreciate your feedback and support. And feel free to, to send uh, your comments if you are struggling with the clock domain crossings or if you need uh, private consultation, feel free to contact us. We would be happy to help you. Have a wonderful day.